people always say we have an amazing job and uh, no jokes we literally have an amazing job we get to work with incredible birds like casper the kestrel here and we also get to do some really cool stuff for conservation as well so we are very very lucky people the essence of what we do is basically to show people just how amazing these birds are because we only conserve what we care about right let's just break that down a second we only conserve what we care about i know i do because I've been working with birds of prey for years now and understanding hawks has been so important to me almost nothing else has mattered quite as much. Biggest funded conservation efforts in the world have been for the giant pandas, African elephants, lions and leopards. And I stand here and advocate for kestrels and other amazing birds like this dude. But did you know that 53% of native plant species are declining? those three and a half thousand native plant species, more than half of them are in decline. 62% of ancient arable wildflowers have declined, driven by each and every one of us and our dependence on food production and industrialised farming. Climate change has also played its part as well, with changing weather affecting how these grasslands can grow, develop and maintain themselves. I've got to be honest, Plants never really excited me in the same way that birds of prey and owls do. And the more I learn about raptors, the more I learn about plant life, invertebrate life, even microscopic life, and how amazing it is. Pollinators feed from the sweet nectar that plants provide, and in return, they move the pollen from one plant to another, fertilising the plant species, enabling it to reproduce. And over millions and millions of years, pollinators and plants have become interdependent on one another. Awesome stuff, right? Plant species are in decline. Climate change is causing changes in ecosystems everywhere. And now insects are in trouble too. Back in 2021, scientists discovered a whopper of a fact. Flying insects have declined by nearly 60% since 2004. You're never gonna guess how they found that one out. 2021, scientists looked at the density of insect residue on vehicle number plates over a large period of time and a large area in the UK. Little owls have a high percentage of invertebrates in their diet. In some studies, over 85% of their captures throughout a day will be bugs, beetles, earthworms and other kinds of insects. One insect that they may consume pretty regularly are earwigs. Common earwigs like to live in dark, damp places where they feed off rotting vegetation and also other insects. There's probably a couple in this amazing insect hotel that my colleague Alice built last year and they like to live right down in the darkest corners down there. Amazing little creatures. They pick up a bad myth and legend that they crawl into your ear and do damage, but they certainly don't do that at all. In fact, the large pincers you can see on the front of the earwig are more used to scare off predators and no worry to us people. And they're actually really attentive parents. And after the female has laid her eggs, she will clean, defend and protect those eggs in her chosen spot until they hatch. Insect decline averages 2.5% every single year here in the UK. And whilst... Earwigs are still spotted relatively commonly. We don't have enough information to really know the full extent of the decline of that species. But the likelihood is it isn't far off the rate of other invertebrates in the UK. Little owls perch a few feet above ground using really sensitive hearing and vision to pinpoint the movements of the earwig, pouncing from above using those super sharp talons to be able to dispatch their prey. And of course, using that beak to finish the job and swallow the prey pretty quickly. But we've zoomed in here on one predator-prey interaction. One species of raptor, or owl, being the little owl, and then one species of prey, the earwig. Now, earwigs are one of over 500 different species of just invertebrates that have been recorded as part of a little owl's diet. So, you can imagine the huge spectra we're talking about when it comes to insects, and bird of prey relationships, and that's just directly, not even talking about all the other species that raptors will predate, that insects play a part of in that prey species diet. So it's a huge system that we're talking about here. So plant life is on the decline, 
Pollinators are disappearing. There's less insect prey for other birds, animals or beetles like earwigs. And before you know it, we're back to hawks and owls again. Little owls have declined by over 40% in Europe over the last 30 years. So is that because of plant decline? If the answer was as simple as just yes or no, then we probably wouldn't have made a whole YouTube film about it. But the thing to think about is that all of wildlife is uniquely amazing. Everything from the microscopic organisms that we can't see, all the way up to the stuff that does look, to our human simple eyes, amazing. Like our beautiful birds of prey in flight. All of those species are vastly interconnected and it's super important that we try and understand managing and conserving wildlife on a holistic basis. Conserving habitats and ecosystems together because they're all interdependent on one another. So next time you think about conservation, think about that instead of just what looks coolest to you. And when it comes to what we do, we crack the door open when we talk to farmers, landowners, conservationists and also members of the public visiting the centre. We crack the door open by talking about birds of prey and showing you guys how amazing these birds are and how awesome they are to have in our ecosystems. And in doing that, we're able to then look at conserving and protecting habitats. Now, we tend to think of wildlife versus human life, or wildlife and human life. But the amazing thing is, is that human life is interconnected with thousands and millions of species in so many different ways across the globe. So maybe it's time that we stop thinking about human life and wildlife as two separate things.